Um, I never think of myself as a researcher, you know. I think of myself as a, a philosopher and a humanities person. And uh, I suppose, even unconsciously, when I, re I refer to so many novels in my writing and so much poetry in my writing, uh, I don't think I'm so... I don't think when I read the, uh, the War and Peace, or the, I'm saying, how can I use this? You know, people used to say, because I quoted so much, they said uh, that when I said Camus, I'd have to run to the bookshelf, and, but it, it just swims into my head, you, you know, it's just very, and people don't always understand. Then people told me I quoted so much because I was a woman, and I, I was hiding behind all those quotations. I don't really, could be, but I don't really think so, and, and uh, but so I don't know if it's research. I think it's a little bit like reading in the way that uh, my artist friend uncovers a, a painting, you know, try to keep read. And then I, I, like the last couple of days, because I have to give that paper on aesthetics as research, I, I don't even understand the title. So I've been reading everything from, uh, not everything, but Read, thinking, how do I prepare for a conference on qualitative research? So I read Merleau-Ponty and Marcel Dufresne, who's a French, and I read Danto just as a little, <laughs> you know, the death of art. And I'm thinking, uh, well, maybe I'll just get my thinking together, but it's not, I don't think it's research. You know, probably for you, it's research in the qualitative sense or Gautama's sense that research is to find the meaning of what you're looking at. It's not to measure it. So I think, uh, you know, I, I think I do it that way. I think I go to my school, go to the, the new school, and try to find the meaning of even the relation between the kids and the teacher, you know. So it's people says that's not research and I say stay away from me I'm not a researcher <laughs> because I think a researcher as many people understand it is explain something and I'm not I'm not so interested in explaining I'm ex interested in showing the meaning but I can't prove it does that bother you qualitatively they ask for example I've been working at Lincoln Center I, I helped to start the Lincoln Center Institute and uh, I'm so-called philosopher in residence and more and more the the bureaucrats at the Institute want me to write things that they could uh, to sell aesthetic education to superintendents or to talk about it in a way that will support some kind of grant proposal uh, and I keep saying you cannot prove it you know how, how can you prove that doing this or that will make an aesthetic experience more likely? And, and then I can keep asking people, how do you know when someone else has an aesthetic experience? Or how do you know when you have one and how do you explain it? So, you know, I get very unnerved by the research they ask me to do. And they start a research circle on, on uh, aesthetic education I keep saying it's unethical to talk about proving something. I would like to say for, that if I know more about perception and I know more about imagination, I can talk more meaningfully about what happens in an encounter between a person and a work of art. And I was just say, just writing uh, that I can't prove that either, that for me, like for a lot of people, the the, uh, the perceiver or the appreciator is on one side and the work of art is at the other. And the, uh, no, well, the work is at the other. And the work of art is an event that occurs in the encounter between consciousness and the work. I, I don't want to say it's measurable. So uh, they, that's not good enough for my for my bureaucratic people, but I think that's true. I think you have to think of it as an event, and it's never the same for different people. 
you know, which, like interpretive, I guess, first of all, I have to say, and it, it sounds as if it isn't true, but it is true. I keep redefining <laughs> myself. It's, it, you know, it's hard to know. I, uh, I think I'm a teacher. I don't know, I think I'm a writer first and then a teacher. Uh, and I think my teaching feeds into my writing and my writing into my teaching. And if teaching is a conversation and you have to hear what the other side of the conversation is, it must affect. But one of the things that is amazing to me, and I don't know if it happened to, happens to other people, uh, after I was sick, I couldn't write. You know, part of it is arthritis, and uh, at the beginning I couldn't even read, but I always thought about my writing as coming from here down my arm, and I only learned to use the computer after I started to get better. I never thought I could write on a computer, but I could type, so... Uh, but what I found out, like the other night, I thought, I don't know what the hell this aesthetics is, research is. And I start to write, and it really does come. It really, and I don't know how or why, or even if it's any good. But but it's part of it is like, trust yourself. Because I can't do it on a yellow pad anymore. It, it's hard to do notes on a yellow pad. And it, it's like flow, <laughs> you know, and then I, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the Hungarian guy with the funny name who wrote about flow. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's another name I lost. But there is something about it, and I don't understand it. And uh, I think I'm terribly lucky because I gather that a lot of stuff I didn't even know was accumulating is accumulating. And part of it is memory. Part of it may be your creativity. Part of it is... Uh, I suppose being affected by the prose of things that I read and feeling so strongly that there should be a concreteness 